nobody i'm back and today i wanted to do a bit of a an overview of everything i own that relates to the um catalan metal scene um i've collected a few things throughout the past few years and I already had an idea like that, but it was centered around a single artist, because I own a lot of things by him. But then I thought, let's actually expand. It's not a very talked about scene, and there's a lot of things, there's a lot of bands, there's a lot of artists, um, some visual artists that I wish got more recognition as well. Um, so, yeah. I thought, why, why not show everything I own? Um, and I will link everything in the description, every, every single artist, person, band, anything that I talk about here. Um, I, will, I will link it in the description and you can <laughs> look out for them. Um, but first I wanted to um, start by doing an honorable mention to the Spain Kills um, compilation, uh, which is 10 CDs of uh, various metal genres, starting with uh, two albums dedicated to death metal, uh, two albums dedicated to black metal, two to th uh, thrash metal, one for grindcore, one for brutal death metal, one for Doom and one for Metalcore and Deathcore and more metal in general. Um, this is not specific to the Catalan scene, it, it, it's the, the Spanish scene in general. But there's a, a whole bunch of Catalan bands here. And it's one of the first um, introductions I got to a lot of bands from, from here and from around the state. And yeah, I've, I've had this for um, at least at least ten years, so I, I I thought I would I would bring it up. Spain Kills from um, from Extreme Music, which is one of the bigger extreme metal labels in Spain. Um, I think it's run by the guy from Obulst. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And leaving that behind and entering into the Catalan scene proper. Um, I wanted to start with um, probably the name you'll be hearing the most, which is Manel Woodcutter. Um, Manel Woodcutter is um, an artist and musician um, working both with his own projects and with a lot of other bands and artists. Um, his main uh, main project in the musical sense is Amargo, which means bitterness. And I own quite a few things from Amargo. Um, there's a whole bunch of tapes here. Um, there's the Marlets Dosus i, i, i Pedra Ens, custo ens Custodien uh, album. Uh, everything that is not musical as well has been done by him. Um, so all the, all the layout and the, and the photo, obviously. Um, yeah. This one I've got as well two mixtapes that he has gifted me uh, himself. Um, which, you know, pretty cool stuff. This one is a really old one. Well, really from from the early days um it was burned and and stuff um so yeah pretty cool stuff there's also um it's kind of hard to read but yeah i've had this one um with the old 
version of the logo on the tape. Uh, I think it's signed with blood. It was, really run by, it was released by Macabre Distro, which is a label that he and a couple of other people operate. Um, I've met up with them. Nice people. Gifted me a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, and released a few of my things. Um, we've had the Subseopathia, which is one of the more well-known albums by him. And uh, Terras de Somnis a Perdre, which is also a pretty good one with the new law. Um, I got this uh, floppy, it's a floppy disc. Um, I don't, I don't remember if it came with another release uh, or if uh, this was just a run that he did, but yeah, I got it. I also got gifted this mini disc, I think also signed with his blood. Um, has an, it's got this little sigil here. No, it, it wasn't signed with his blood, but yeah. But the, the, the item itself is just a regular mini disc. Haven't tried it yet, I don't think there's any way for me to, to do so. But yeah, it's, a, it's, more, it's more of a piece of merchandise. Most of the music here is a piece of merchandise for me. Um, I've got Terras de Somnis a, uh, Terras de Somnis a Perdre again, but on CD. Um, a Marks, a Marks Camins. Alliberant, also on CD, and uh, Fins Reixí dins, dins la Clara de la Margot, which is also on CD. I don't think the illustration can be seen very well, but yeah, that's what happens when you make everything on black, <laughs> on top of black. Um, Besides all of that, all of the music, I also own an Amargo shirt that's, you know, from a while ago it has the old logo, there's new ones with the new logo, but I, I, I had this one. I like the old logo a lot. I like the new logo, but the old logo has, you know, a bit of a gothic feel. Um, feels kind of close to the uh, to the vamp vampiric black metal uh, scene, which I'm technically a part of. Um, and this was also gifted. I've got an Amargo poster, um, which was actually signed by him. I think he gifted it to me. Yeah, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, still with his things, other projects of him, uh, of his include Eclipse Moon Apparitions. There's a few releases out. This one is the one I know, or I own, which is um, Keller Synth, Experimental Synth that he does well stoned. Um, there's uh, Malfesans, I think it's pronounced, which was a project of his with the guy from Calderum, which is another relatively well-known band project from the Catalan scene. Uh, there's um, two splits from Amargo, one with Glemt and one with um, Turment Nocturne. Um, and one from his ambient, I think, project, uh, Embodied Spectre, with uh, the Ghost Gardener from France, I think. And another shirt from a band he's in called Siberia. They're a post-rock, post-metal band, um, if you like, Russian circles, or, 
other heavy heavier post rock band just kind of that um drum metal plate i think yeah pretty good band and finally a cd from vampiric winter which is a band that uh, he has um, with Sanguinous Moth, um, which links pretty pretty well, uh, transitions pretty well to Sanguinous Moth now. Um, who is another artist? I think he's one of the more well known from this side of the black metal scene. Um, he has worked with Teal and uh, with has a lot of projects with Rana Oke from Teal and uh, his, some of his projects and bands have a bit of a following. Um, he's a really good vocalist and guitar player, especially. And his project Berminus Night released an album a while ago. This one, uh, <laughs> still with Manuel Woodcutter, has uh, uh, well, the, the layout is by, Man Man by Manel, and the drums are by Manel, but the keyboards are by Rona Oke from Till and Darkest Bethlehem, but everything else is by him. And the photo here is by um, Patri, um, Dark Altschmerz, who has... Uh, has done a lot of photography and a lot of things for, for him, um, including this photo right here, layout also by Manel Woodcutter. Um, uh, this is uh, the, the debut album by Arna, which is another project of uh, Sanguinous Moth, but this time with uh, uh, Morthalion as a vocalist and Morthalion is a musician and producer from the scene um, I think he's also a visual artist does a lot of things and yeah he's not one of of these figures that has did his toes in, in all places um, he's currently a uh, uh, a musician and a producer and no, a producer and, and, and DJ of um, trans music, which is pretty cool, with his wife, with whom he also has a, a studio for production, metal production especially. Um, Morthalion, under the name Fento, also has a project called... Um, Bastard of Lauren, uh, I don't think it's here. Yeah. This album is uh, like B Bastard of Lauren is a collaboration between him and uh, Londor, who is a visual artist, who also does the lyrics. Um, and they base a lot of their aesthetic on, on the Soulsborne si uh, series and a little bit on, um, on Berserk. They also uh, gifted me, actually, uh, this tape, uh, which is their la latest release, shrouded, in, uh, shrouded, by the, the, shrouded by the Twilight, um, which just three songs, including a Transylvanian Hunger cover. And, finally, the thing that was preventing me from making this video because I couldn't find it, a shirt, Bastard of Lauren shirt, logo on front, and especially important is the piece on the back, which has this uh, magnificent, uh, magnificent skull and guns and chains and candles, um, with the the text when the when the red moon hangs low, the line between man and beast is blurred. Madmen toil so repetitiously in rituals to beckon the moon, which is a reference to Bloodborne, and yeah, this is all, everything I own from 
va estar tot l'hora. Així és, tu realitzes en... en The Shirt. But... I own more things by Mortalion. This is his solo post-black project. Luces lejanas. Pretty good. Really pretty good post-black. The drums here were also done by Manel Woodcutter, but everything else except the vocals in one track were done by him. And I think Barkaros is his Dungeon Synth project. I think it's his. He gifted it to me at least when I bought one of his albums. Um, so yeah, this is everything I have from Morthalion. So, so far we've gone through three main players, uh, which are Mana Woodcutter. Sanguinous Moth and Mortalion. Um, there's also other people like Dark Altness um, and, and Londor, among others. Um, but now we start to move to other places. Like this thing, Deep, which is a uh, a project from a pretty mysterious figure. Um, kind of traditional black metal um, based around Cat South Catalonian folklore. Um, really good. Uh, pretty interesting. Kind of unusual. And Kumanum by Argar which is uh, one of the older things I own. Um, this is a reissue. It's not like I own an old, old tape. Um, but uh, yeah, um, Pesta Negra Records released both of these, um, re-released both of these, with Kumanum being from 2001, I think, originally. And it's one of it's a late '90s, early 2000s symphonic black metal band, which is pretty cool to own right now because it's really limited when they do these ratios. Um, but yeah, this is everything I have in terms of black metal, with the kind of exception of these, which are fanzines by Paura, which includes Negranit, um, in Negra Plain, Negranit and Negra Plain. Um, yeah, Paura is another distributor and owner of labels. And he has a fanzine. I know I'm in one of these. I don't have that one because I, I always forget to ask him, um, well, to, to, to request for him to give it to me. Um, he says he probably has it, but I never tell him <laughs> um, to send it. Um, and that's everything in terms of black metal. And moving on to people that know people, they know a bunch of the people I've mentioned. We have uh, Tampastat, which was one of my introductions to the Catalan underground. They are a grindcore, crust, metallic crust band. Um, that I saw live maybe five years ago, I think. I think five years ago, yeah. And they give and they were giving out their debut EP. EP. And they also own a, a split between them and Sota Terra, which is another metallic crust band. And the artwork of this split. Um, was done by the same person that did this thing. Uh, so yeah, my, my right arm was tattooed by the same person who did this artwork, who's an incredible artist, um, really great dude. Um, 
goes by um, by Narcisse, among other names, the, the, the Monomania 666 on Instagram. And yeah, he's a tattoo artist, he's moving around a lot. Yeah, pretty affordable for, you know, <laughs> the monstrosity that, that was this. So yeah, check it, check him out. He's also a, a vocalist for a couple of, uh, of bands uh, in the death, grind side of things. Um, so yeah. And moving on again, um, we go to more mainstream styles of metal from the Catalan scene. Uh, with First with Morphium. This is the second album by Morphium. Um, they are a, a band from Girona, which is where I'm from. Um, and they play a sort they played a sort of mixture of metalcore with a bit of death metal, gothic undertones, really, really, really depressing stuff. But very energetic as well. The first two albums are a masterpiece in my opinion, this one especially. Um, and then they moved on to a sort of new metal sound like corn but with a little bit more metal more metal core uh, which is fine but I think that the first two albums were really something special then we have uh, Bill Idiot which um, is a metal core band formed as far as I know from what I've been told by ex-members of uh, Fahrenheit which is another band another metal core band um, from the area of uh, Alam Purda, which is where I was born. Um, so yeah, this, these guys were rehearsing their first uh, shows not too far from where I was living. Um, you know, pretty standard uh, metalcore in the more hardcore, post-hardcore tradition. Um, and finally, uh, another band that I just realized I forgot to bring the shirt, but I also own a shirt up from, which is Bioblast. They're a thrash metal band. Um, I think that currently they are going to more extreme sides like Death Thrash and Black Thrash. Um, pretty close to Creator uh, and Slayer in this album. Um, I saw them live in a festival, a small festival, in the Ampurda area, as well, and they were quite impressive. A really, really small crowd, really small stage, and they were the opener band, and they were <laughs> they were amazing. They they were pretty amazing. Um, I know people that know them. My ex partner talked to one of them. They seem pretty nice. And their like their playing is top tier. I own a shirt by them, but I forgot to bring it, and I'm not gonna go look for it right now. And yeah, that's set. That's everything. Everything I own um, from the the Catalan metal scene. But to finish completely what we have here, I will be a little self-indulgent. And I will bring my own things because I'm technically part of the Catalan scene, and it also um, will show a bit, a bit more of the art of some of, of, of for example, Manel Woodcutter. Um, and we'll start with the first thing I ever released back in 2020, um, which is. Uh, the first thing I released physically, I've been releasing for a lot longer. Um, Asken of Verden, um, Seventh Circle, Second Ring. This was uh, um, this was done in the most <laughs> atrocious way. It's a really noisy, depressive black metal album. Um, I got really depressed while making it, but the, the, it's so, so unbearably noisy. And the art layout and the release 
were orchestrated by Blasted Bastards from Indonesia and released um, by an Indonesian label. Um, I own several of these. They sent me like 30, uh, 30 uh, tapes. And then we have um, this one, which is a split between Amargo and Askenaf Verden. So this is why it's important for me to bring this up. Um, this was released by Forbidden Cube Records um, a while ago, in 2022, I think. Um, it's two tracks by me, two tracks by Amargo. Um, layout, artwork by Manal Woodcutter, obviously. It won it's a release of his as well, so it would make sense. Then we have... Um, and I'll worship your blue light by Isfiel. I don't know if we can see the art. But yeah, this was uh, released by Witch Cult Records. Um, it was the reason why it's difficult to see is because it was printed on blue paper. The original was in black and white. It looks beautiful in person. Um, atmospheric black metal. Not much to say about it. Um, this album is a, also features um, three other people, uh, which are um, Loma Static, who is a DJ and producer, mostly of electronic music and dub and other similar styles and hip hop, um, but also really into experimental music. And we, we studied together, so I asked him if he could contribute to one of the ambient tracks. Then there's Aoki Ahara, uh, also known as, as Victoria Dimitriev. Um, she's uh, an ambient dungeon synth liminal wave artist um, with whom I've also been in contact for a while. And finally, uh, Lia Marcade, who is one of my most frequent collaborators in a lot of my projects. She has produced albums for me. She has um, played instruments and sang in, in, in some of my albums. And we are currently in a project and we used to be in another project together. Um, so yeah, all three, of the, uh, all three of these artists contribute on a separate ambient track that we would do together. Um, so it's a really special album for that, for that reason to me. Um, then we move on to Lord Sithis. Um, Lord Sithis is an, a black metal, now war metal project um, with uh, extensive uh, references to, uh, to the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, all lyrics are about it. And first time I released anything physical was through uh, Macabra Distro, again, Manel Woodcutter and a few other people um, released this. And the layout was done by Manel Woodcutter, the artwork was done by one of my roommates. Again, I don't know if you can see it properly. Um, but yeah. Um, came with a bonus track, which is, was the first release I ever did, which was a single, a really noisy war metal single, single which was also available uh, with um, with five of the 15 <laughs> tapes that came out, uh, but that sold out pretty quickly, um, which was Ritual Orgy. Uh, it also came in uh, floppy format, again, layout by, by Manel. He did this without telling me, um, and I found it really, really funny. Um, and yeah, five of, five of these are running around the world. This is one of them. I know that one of them is in Germany um, and is owned by uh, the man behind Narventare Produktionen, which is important because the next release, uh, the next Lord City release was released by Narventare. Um, again, difficult to see. 
this time the art was done um, by SC Illustrations, also from Indonesia, I think. Um, and yeah, it was pretty exciting release, one of my more uh, well known. And yeah, Narventaga Production, and I never thought that would be a thing. Then we have, um, moving on to more of my, my projects, um, Burdalaka, which is a vampiric black metal project, um, kind of symphonic, kind of gothic. Um, this one was the second album, um, and it was released physically um, by Macabra Distro, again. Layout and artwork and everything by Manuel Woodcutter. Um, and then um, Fiat. Fiat Productions, uh, which is an amazing, amazing label. Um, has done a lot of great work. I've known some, I've met some people that have released through Fiat, and I've talked to Varian, who is the person behind Fiat, and it's a really nice community <laughs> of people. Um, really, everyone is, is really sweet. Um, released the third album by Burdalaka with a different artwork that I originally had. Now this is one, this is the official artwork, if you ask me, it's the one that's kind of everywhere which was this, done by Thaumaturge Artworks. Um, Varian did a great job with the layout this time. The logo is the logo is by Manel Woodcutter. Uh, it's the same as in the previ previous release. But she did a really, really great job, um, Varian. Especially considering she's supposedly not an artist. Um, and then we go to even more things, um, together with the, sorry, it's a, a little bit dusty, um, together with uh, the Burda la Cateage by Ma from Macabra, came a little poster, a tiny little one, uh, with my face for some reason, um, and the logo, uh, yeah, this is just something that was sold alongside it. Um, and also we have, I don't know if it's the only one that's around, but it's a big version of the artwork of the split between Asken of Verden and Amargo. I, I own this as well. This, is, this was not sold, this was given to me by Manel. Um, That's why I'm, I'm not sure if it's the only one. Maybe he has another one. He has the original, probably, because this is printed. Um, then we have a really silly one, which is... Um, this was the artwork. This is the artwork for another album from Isfial that was not released physically, um, called Elenios. And this was drawn by Manel Woodcutter with, uh, with a marker. And it has some 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 extra things uh, like the logo for another one of my projects, Devil Worship. This was done in a, in, in, in a, in a few hours, um, and a potential logo for Macabra Distro, which was very obviously plagiarizing Marduk. Um, and it has a few silly little annotations like. Caminet, which means uh, little path, uh, Yuna, Moon, is feel over here with, with pencils, so yeah, just a paper with things um, that was yeah, given to me by Manel. He gave me just the original artwork, which, is, which was pretty great. And finally, this is the last, last, last thing, speaking of, speaking of original artworks. Thermotorch does, does a pretty cool thing where if you pay for an artwork for your album, you can pay a little extra and she will actually send you the painting, um, which, I don't know, to me, it just makes me happy. 
because it's it's a really good painting and I, I love owning it. I was um, I considered not doing it because I I didn't know if I could pay for it, but um, yeah, having it is, is is I don't know I like it a lot, so I, I like having it, and it's signed here. So yeah, this is literally everything I own, both mine and from other people, including all the music. I haven't counted how many items this includes, um, but yeah, it's not even it's not even that big of a collection with everything I know and all the people I know and all the things I know I haven't bought because I couldn't. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will be interested in any of this. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this was fun. This, this was fun because I, I like going through these things. Bye.